Hey guys, welcome back to another Wego Star Wars 2017 Star Wars review. Hey guys, this time we have the Republic Fire Tank. It's at number 75182. It's ages 8 to 14 up. It has 305 pieces. It retails for $24.99 or $25 US Star. And so guys, this is the second version of this vehicle that we got in Lego because the first one we got was released back in 2008 during the time of the Clone Wars movie coming out. It was like the one of the sets in the Clone Wars, you know, in the very first Clone Wars anime series line in Lego for like the Lego Star Wars theme. And so that set is quite, for pictures that I've seen, because I do not have the set with me, it's like one of those sets that I've been wanting to get for years that I just never got a hold of. And so that's why I thought this set was really great because I was really relieved that Lego was remaking this set and that I could finally get this vehicle. But the problem is, it, it's probably the only big flaw with this set is the size of the vehicle. Because if you guys have the previous version of the Clone Wars set from back in 2008 that came with a bunch of clone figures as Bay figures, and that was it. That's for the Bay figure lineup up for that set. Um, that set was way bigger. It, it, if I remember right, this set was retailing, retailing for $50 back in the day and, and what was in stores on the shelves. And comparing to this one, for it being half that price, I'm just really surprised at how small it is. Because I, I've seen the pictures of the older version and I can tell that it's pretty big. Like, it's probably like, bigger than this, like, almost up to here for the maximum height. Like, you can see my hand, it's probably how big the, the original version was. Like, a little, a, little, a little taller than this one, but not exactly this size. So, that's what you always really love seeing with this type of, and what other, other people have said because I've seen other people's reviews on this set in particular and what the flaws that they, they come across with the size of the vehicle. I actually totally agree with them about that. That the size of the vehicle is a little under scale, the size, comparing to these main figures, but at the same time, I think this is a, a little bit of an opportunity for people to get multiple like more than one of this vehicle because I know back in the day and nowadays trying to get on this vehicle on eBay for the 2008 version like if you try to get the 2008 version on eBay it's gonna be a lot of money so I know people are not rich and still don't have the money to get multiple versions of that set on eBay because I know that it goes for a lot of money nowadays and so now with this set out in the stores um, I think this is a great way for those people to get multiple of the sets to have an army of these tanks. I can have like three, uh, three or four of this tank to go on the battlefield to, or to be in your mock or something like that or your army to, to build up your clone republic army or your imperial army because I've seen this vehicle in Battlefront 2 from 2005 in this in different tones of gray for the imperial side. So yeah, this this vehicle can be used for a lot of things. So yeah, not just for the clone wars in particular. Um, so for the main figure lineup, we got two battle droids. One's called Trooper Gunner, uh, Gunner. But, I was about to say that completely wrong. Um, so if we get a Cold Trooper Gunner in his Phase 2 armor and AOS Sakura, which we got a previous version of AOS in the Kong Turbo Tank in 2010 2011. That was based off the Clone Wars series. So her, this version really changed a lot um, compared to the last version of her because the last version we got was from was based off the Clone Wars series, so it was like more of an animated look. This version looks like it, she came from, came right out of the movies, like Revenge of the Sith, because that's probably, yeah, really the only movie we saw on the battlefield was in Revenge of the Sith during Order 66, Order 66. and so we didn't really see her talking all in the movies, but she was in the movies, kind of like in the background, so yeah. <laughs> um, for, but for the Clone Trooper guy, we got him, as Phase 1 armor during the Clone Wars line up of sets for, from Lego. We've seen that version of the Clone Trooper Gar as a main figure multiple times in the past, um, but never in the Phase 2 armor. And this is like the very first time we've ever seen the Clone Trooper Gar in his Phase 2 armor before, like ever, because we've never seen him, this particular Clone Trooper, in the movies or in the Clone Wars series. We've seen the, him as Phase 1 armor in the Clone Wars series, but not this particular Phase 2 armor. And so yeah, that's pretty cool that they're expanding the Phase 2 armor variety, the possibilities that it, it could be, like the Clone Trooper Guard version, like the uh, coloring and everything, like the tan color, coloring on his helmet and everything, like 
the phase one Corp Trooper Garo had and such, and the vest and everything. So yeah, like the extra armor and all that. So yeah, uh, so yeah. So let's get to the main figures, and then we'll get into the play features of the vehicle, which is the arc that made for the, for knowing the size of the thing. But they are great play features, though. And then we'll get into the box, and then we'll get into the final thoughts, and then we'll end up afterwards. So let's go, guys. Okay guys, so here are the main figures we get in the set. Um, we get two battle droids. I just didn't want to put the, show the second one because they, they're basically the same exact main figure. Is so, let's start, start off with the battle droid real quick just to get them out of the way because there isn't really a difference with them. Like, it's just the plain old, same old battle droid, battle droid we've gotten since... I don't even know the last, like the first, first time we ever got this battle droid, but it was like years ago. So it's always been the same plain old battle droid. Same old, same old. Nothing new about him. He's got his blaster, his usual blaster, and that's what he is. <laughs> so, we get two of the battle droids, which is always nice, so we get to increase your droid army and such. It's really, it's a lot easier. Time everybody else over. <laughs> um, it's a way more easier to get the droids in sets than the clones, surprisingly. So, <laughs> with how many people like the clones, a lot more than the droids. So, surprisingly. That's how things are with Lego, but that's okay <laughs> with me. Um, but the next main figure I'm going to show you guys is the Chrome Trooper Gunner is Phase 2 Armor. Or actually, more likely I should call it the Phase 2 Chrome Trooper Gunner. Because this is his, his Phase 2 Armor, um, as you can see. It's very, very similar to the Phase 1 Chrome Trooper Gunner, but it is Phase 2 Armor, basically. That's really the big difference, was the transition from the Phase 1 Armor to the Phase 2 Armor. So yeah. But other than that, the... Pairing on the armor, uh, on the armor itself, everything with the gray plate, that extra layer of armor, armory, uh, his torso. That did, that didn't really change all that much compared to the last version that we got years ago. And the helmet, the pairing, the coloring of the helmet, didn't really change all that much. It's just really the phase two armor that really changed, the evolution on over time. So yeah, uh, but the torso and the helmet, they're great. Great, very, very great with detail on that from Lego. That's good. Well done. The way, well done as well. Take a look at the back. Great job with the vest. Take the tailing to the back of the armor, which is great. Um, this is his blaster. It's basically a big long rifle with the extra little Lego piece on the, on the front of it. Connected it to it, it can look like a, a like a bigger blaster, basically, where the, where those bigger blasters instead of like a random normal. Cold Trooper Blaster is like one of those longer ones that, that cost more firepower, bring on more firepower to, to the droids and destroy them 10 times as easier. It's such a, like, more powerful than the standardized blasters for the clones. So yeah. Um, but the helmet, let me take off the helmet real quick. We got Angry Clone. For once, this is actually accurate. <laughs> that for Lego to put the Angry Clone head on a Clone Trooper. <laughs> on a Clone Trooper instead of a... Stormtrooper, or First or Stormtrooper, or any of those other troopers. So yeah, now the difference about that guy, head, the Angry Kong head, as everybody calls it nowadays, they just call the head Angry Kong. So yeah, <laughs> which makes sense. But overall, the, the main figure I really, really like. Like this is one of my favorite main figures in this set, along with Ao Sakura because they did a way better job with her. Really improved over the last version of her as well, but. At the same time, I really like the clone troopers. Like, I'm just uh, hoping that they make more prequel sets over time, like Lego has made like two sets for this wave that are based off the prequels, and they keep bringing out sets that were based off Revenge, Re Revenge of the Sith, which I'm really happy about. And I'm just hoping one of these days they make they remake the ultimate life that we do on Mustafar in Lego form. They just remake that set. Hopefully, they will eventually down the line. But so far, they've been doing pretty well with the prequel sets. So. If they keep doing that, I, I probably will, will be too disappointed, so yeah. So, let's get out to our last baby here. Probably the best one out of this entire set is A.O. Sakura, the Jedi Knight. Like I said, at this time she's basically a Jedi Knight. I don't know if she ever became a Jedi Master, but for what I know, she was, she's always been like a Jedi Knight during the Clone Wars, so yeah. Um, but the detailing on her is very, very well done. Torso, very well done. The legs that aren't a praying on the legs, which is okay, because her legs are always brown, so yeah. Take your hair piece off real quick. Take a look at the back torso. And while we have the hair piece off, she has a double-sided face, 
or like a smile, calm face, and then on the other side, a angry face, or go to find droids or something like that, or charging into the battle. Um, the hairpiece, let's take a look at the hairpiece real quick. Very nice with detail. Put the focus here. It's very nice with detail with the brown lines and everything, like you see in the movie and in the Clone Wars series. Very well done with, with the hair mold, basically, for the character overall. So, yeah, as, as usual, she has her blue lightsaber that she always carries, which is great. And so, that is Aoi Sakura. This is the newest version of her because the previous version is like way, way different compared to this one. Like, it was like fully animated. It just looked like the Aoi Sakura in the Clone Wars series. And this one looks like the one you would see in the movies, which is great. Um, so those are the main figures we get in the set. Like I said before, we get two of the battle droids, but I didn't want to show both of them because they're basically exactly the same. And no one really cares about the toys that make figures anymore because they're basically exactly the same every single time. <laughs> so yeah, there's never any different than the last time, and so yeah. So those are the main figures, and so let's get into the Republic the Republic Fire Ticket itself. Then we'll, we'll get onto the box and then the final box. So let's go guys. Okay guys, so now that we have the proposed fire tank out here, we're going to look at the play features. And so, what you can do with the laser cannons here is that they can rotate around, now like 360 degrees, so more like 180 degrees, from one side to the other side, to make it look like you get blast the toys from the back, from behind, which is cool. Um, but the laser cannons, this is the thing though. How you can actually fire them is actually stun shooters on your side, it, just like on the other side. Basically, the tank's that thing. Um, it's kind of weird though with the stun shooters, but I can see why they did the stun shooters because of the fact that they were trying to create it and make it more like as accurate as they possibly could. So they, if they wanted to do like something completely different, like spring, spring loaded shooters, it would look kind of weird and odd to the people that bought the set. It looked bad, like. I guess we would look like hey, the Republic Fire take out with it with that look. And so I can see why they did that with the stud shears instead of the spring load shears. And so yeah. So overall I, I think uh, that they will find the way they are. And I don't really mind about the stud shears at all. So yeah. But I know there's people out there that hate those, which I can't understand why. Um But if you take a look at the back here though, there's a storage area right here. With extra ammo in there for the stutters, which is great. That is, it is also great that this entire space back here wasn't wasted and not used for anything, which is great. It's another play feature that kids could pull out extra ammo to to load up, reload their blaster cannons and fire and, and continue firing at the droids, which is great. Um, I like how Lego used the antenna pieces right here for the back of the tank because I know from the last person that there was a lot like two antennas. On the back, which is great. Um, they kept that for this type of version. Um, the color scheme for this are the red, the white, and the little bit of green. And while it, while I was actually building it, I actually was very interested in how they kept all these other colors from being exposed. Like there was some dark green colors, like this here. It's a tan in there, and everything like dark grays, everything. And they're all covered up, which is great. I really, really appreciate Lego trying to, to keep all the odd colors that weren't accurate to the vehicle not exposed. Which is also a great thing. Um, there's also a lot of stickers to this. I should let you guys know about that. Um, there's stickers here, 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 and there. But overall, if you don't have the stickers on on the set, you gotta really take it too much out of the detail that you that you would have with the stickers. If you don't have the stickers on, if you, if you do not have the stickers on the vehicle, because it's basically the color the color scheme that really matters the most out of this vehicle, I would think in my opinion is really overall the color scheme because it, it doesn't really take away anything color scheme wise. So yeah, um, the cockpit area, the hatch is up here at the top, and this is what it looks like in the inside. You got the little control panel right here. <laughs> Like right there. And there's the scene area for the clone trooper right there. 
and what you can actually do is you can actually have the same down inside thing, but we're not going to do that because it's very very difficult to take to take them out of the cockpit. So we're not going to basically put the clone trooper inside the cockpit because well it's kind of hard to take them out. And so like once you get it stuck in there, it's kind of hard to take them out. Like you got to point off his helmet and then you got to like get a good grip on. It's such like just what I did here. It's kind of hard to pull them out. <laughs> it's kind of stuck in there. So you gotta basically do that. It, so it's kind of a small area, but it's small enough for what it was for what it's supposed to do. So I highly recommend that he clip with his hands on this here, on this bar here, so you can have his head poking out, sticking out of the top. Which I think is a lot cooler looking than having the head down over the cone because we're having hiding inside the tank. So yeah, you can have him. Hold it, like sticking it outside at the top of the tank and uses his blaster rifle to blast some droids from a distance. So yeah, cool. And so we're gonna basically basically do that. Um, put the blaster back on. Basically, have to turn his hand to the side. And now what we're gonna do is put his hand in there. If I can. I'm just kidding, I guess we should keep the blaster off for now. Took his helmet off. <laughs> there we go. Now we got him in there. <laughs> but I've got the clone trooper in there. Okay, so now we're gonna put the blaster rifle back on his other hand. Carefully. <laughs> There we go. So that's what the clone trooper looks like with his head sticking out with his blaster rifle out in the open and firing at the droids, which is cool. It's a little cool action scene here with the clone trooper sticking out and such to fighting it alongside driving the thing, <laughs> driving the entire tank around. Um, so yeah, that's one way of doing it. But the other way is pretty simple: is to have him sit all the way down inside the. The cockpit, which I highly recommend not doing, in case you, it's, unless you guys want, really want to do that. Um, but I highly recommend just do it this way. Um, just having his head stick out, and having him drive it, it's a little easier to get him out of the cockpit than having him sit all the way down the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna say about that. Um, and the other play feature, the last play feature of the set is this wheel to the bottom. It's so. It, it makes it look like it makes it look like it's hovering, but not that off, high off the ground though. But you can roll it around though. Play as simple as that. This is great. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put a little bow droid out here in the open if we can get him to stand up. <laughs> because I know they're pretty hard to stand up. So we're gonna shoot the statues real quick, just uh, for fun, just for a, a fun sake in this review. <laughs> just have a little bit of fun. Yeah. And we shot one down, <laughs> and then we'll try to get the other one with the other shooter. And as you can see, I missed. And so what we can do then is have Ayla come in, chop him in half. <laughs> And he just launched all the way across the studio. <laughs> so, yeah, that's basically the Republic Fire Tank, everybody. It, that's really all the play features, I think. I'm going to take a look at the back of the box real quick. Make sure. And yeah, that's all the play features to, this, to the Republic Fire Tank of 2017. And so, overall, in my opinion, for the play features and the build wise for this vehicle, great. For the play features, so this is a great. A variety of play features in the set. I think your hey, your kid or your collecting wise is gonna be very interested in this in the set. Um, the play features are great, so you have a lot of fun with the set. And the fact that you get a Jedi in here as well is a great thing too, because it, in case if you guys miss, it, it miss your aiming, it, your the stud how this can messes with the droids, you can have you can pretend Ayla comes in and then it cuts down the droids that are remaining. So yeah. That's a great thing too. And so there's a lot of pretending, uh, pretending playability for the set and actual, and actual playability with the vehicle as well. 
And so, yeah, this is going to be used for great action scenes and mock and such. And I really appreciate that. Um, so we get another version of a clone trooper, a brand new version of a clone trooper that we've never seen before, which is great. Um, and so, overall, I think this set is really is worth game. For, like, but really the age range really does matter, in my opinion, because I know there's going to be collectors out there that are going to want to get the way bigger version from 2008, because it's bigger, it looks more accurate, size-wise. I can't understand that. But this, for this set, alone, if you guys are looking to build up an army of them, this is the perfect set for that. Because nowadays, the older version is way more money nowadays. It, even though it was way, it, it was really pricey back then too. <laughs> So yeah, so let's get on to the box of the set, and then we'll get into the final thoughts, and then we'll end it off. So let's get on to the box, guys. So here's the box, guys. As you can see, it's the same exact size box as the Darth Vader Transformation set, so nothing else to say about that. Um, for the size of the box, or the thickness of the box. Um, and we get the Lego Star Wars logo on top, along with the Rogue One arc with the Death Trooper and the TIE Fire. Uh, we get the Disney logo at the bottom right. We get the May figure right up at the bottom left with the Cloak Trooper Gar, AO Secura, and the two battle droids. Uh, we get this amazing art on the front of this set art for uh, representing the Lego set itself. The Republic Fire Tank, and we get the Cloak Trooper looking a piggy out at the top. Firing a uh, can for the stutters and the droids. It was the droids that blow up. It was them attacking more likely the Jedi alien secure, which is a take a charge that we need the the tank the bell. It looks like it's on like Tatooine or uh, some type of desert like planet, which is pretty interesting. Um, and we get the set information on the side, the age range, the set number, the piece count, and the name of the set. Um, and we take a look at the back here. We get all the play features that are built into the set. Um, we get the rotatable cans, rotatable cans on the side. We get the OB cockpit and the ability to put the clone trooper inside the cockpit. Um, we get the stutters, um, the storage area for the extra ammo, and the wheel, the movable wheel that makes it the tank roll around. And we get another action scene here with AO attacking the droids and the droids attacking the clone trooper, which are attacking them as well. It's so in at this point, nobody's in the tank. They all jumped out of the tank. They are attacking the droids on foot. Um, and so, overall, guys, I really think this set is worth the game if you guys are willing to build an army of this tank. Because I know there's people out there that have gotten the past version, like multiple of the past version, and think this set is a little under scale. Yeah, I can't understand this, but I've, I've never, personally, I've never gotten like the previous version. Yeah, when I've always watched it, it's like one of the sets on my list of ones I wanted to get that I've never gotten. And so, because of how much they are, that particular set is nowadays on eBay and sec any other secondary market websites on the internet. And so, with Lego bringing out this version of the Republic Fire Tank, I was really, 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 I was really, really excited for the set, and I really, really wanted to collect the set. And do I like, do I really like this set? Yes, I do. I really think this is a really great addition to the Clone Wars. It like remember, like putting tribute to the Clone Wars series and the prequels. They like remembering the prequels and keeping the prequels alive by bringing out more prequel merchandise and such from like Revenge of the Sith and the Clone Wars when there isn't that much. Clone Wars or prequel merchandise out there anymore nowadays with The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, Rogue One, and all that, and Rebel. And so, yeah. Um, so, I think this is a great way to remember the Clone Wars, really, to be honest with you, because this vehicle originated from as one of the very first Star Wars The Clone Wars Lego sets that came out during the time of the Clone Wars movie in 2008. So, do I like this set? Yes, I really do like it. I recommend it. For people that are like, willing to build an army of this vehicle, like get three or four of them. But like, if you want to get more than that, if you guys have the money to get more than four, then if you want to, like, you, you, you can always make like an army of five or six, which is also a great thing. 
and you can put them on your giant Clone Wars era mock or something. You've got to work on a Clone Wars mock, like for Umbara or Coruscant or Christosis or Tatooine or Geonosis. Um, this is a great vehicle to put in that mock. If it, the mock's not that big, this is, a, this is a great vehicle to put in a small mock. And so yeah, along with the ATTE from 2013, or the Chrome Turbo Tank from last year from 2016. Because if you put that 2016 Chrome Turbo Tank right next to this, I think they're gonna really, I think the size is really too, are gonna really work. And so yeah, just a little bit of information of that stuff on the mock wise there, for people that do Lego mocks out there for Star Wars, and so yeah. Um, and also love the Clone Wars as well. And so overall, I think this set is worth like an 8, 8.5 out of 10. And the big, and actually there's two reasons. Um, because of the cockpit being so small that if you want to put the Clone Trooper all the way down inside the cockpit, it's, it's going to be a real tricky to take him out without pulling off his helmet. Then you got to really go back in there and pull it out or it, like get loose in there. And if it gets stuck in there, you got to turn over the tank and shake it out. And have it fall out, which is kind of sometimes it's a pain in the neck. Um, but it's a, this is way go and then do do the set within a twenty five dollar range, and so I can understand that. Um, the other reason is because of the set that the sale, the size of the vehicle compared to the previous version that I do not have. But I've seen pictures of it, I've seen reviews on the older version, and I could tell this one's way smaller. Um. Than the previous version, um, but I still do think this is a great vehicle, even though it's smaller, it's really small, regardless of the size. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. And basically, the play features and the main figures in the vehicle are great. Everything's great about the set. It's just those two flaws that, that I can't, I can't get past. But overall, I think you're still gonna be getting a great set. 8.5 8 out of 10 was my rating for the set. The main figures are great. Wish we got another clone trooper because seriously, most sense to come with droids. If we get more droids than clones, and I kinda get, sometimes I get, kind of get a little annoyed by that because I like the clones way more than the droids because usually the droids always look the same, while the clones always have the uh, cool color patterns every day to, to help identify which ranking of the clone they are, like is there a clone trooper gunner, or is there a captain, or a commander, or which type of legion they're from, like the final or first, or 212, etc. Um, and so, I wish we got another clone trooper, but that's okay, I don't really mind. Like, we could have got Mega Y, or, or a clone trooper from that legion, like the clone troopers with the yellow marking, yellow pairings, because they're the clone troopers that fight alongside Ayla, right here. That we that we get in the set, so I don't know. The main figures are fine, but I think they could add another Chrome Trooper. It just have one battle droid. So yeah. Um. So overall, great set, but I think it could have been better. I think it could have been a little bit improved, just a little bit, just a little bit. It made like a forty dollar set or or a fifty dollar set again, but overall, this is a great set. Um. So that's for me, guys. So please. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below on my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next LEGO Star Wars 2017 Summer Set Review. Or in, in my next update video, which will probably be next month in July. Um, in a Cars 3 video. But I think I basically did most of what I wanted to talk about for Cars 3. So yeah, I think the movie review for Cars 3 that I did, that I uploaded a few days ago, like a Sunday, I think that's going to be really it for the Cars 3 videos. But if there's anything else that, come, that pops up for Cars 3, I'll certainly do a video on if I feel like it's willing to do a video on. And so, yeah. So, I think that's gonna be it. So, have a good day, guys. Bye. And may the force be with you.